Welcome to Getting to Know You. Today I have Kay, <coughs> excuse me, Kay Jones with me. And this idea was, uh, let's see, birthed, I guess, by uh, Betty Osan, who thought it would be good to know the residents better than we know them if we're just having lunch or playing cards or a game. And um, I've had the privilege of interviewing many wonderful people, but today I have a really special person. <laughs> I just so respect Kay Jones and her husband. They, um, they are real, really models for this community. You need something, they sign up. Um, I know that Kay has had a group of the nurses here at Westminster, and one day I was talking to them and I said that it's an interesting experience for me that when I ask a man to be interviewed, they'll automatically say yes. But I ask a female and they have excuses and not sure, etc. And good old Kay said, you can interview me. I didn't even have to ask her, she volunteered. And I just think that's the model of who Kay Jones is. <laughs> so. Maybe I like to brag. No, that's not. You like to contribute and you like to give to what people want. Because I've talked to you many times and bragging isn't something either you or Don do. <laughs> but my husband and I really enjoy the two of you enjoying each other. Oh, well. You can be at, a, at one of our restaurants, talking together, being together. It seems like how many years have you been married? Seventy. Seventy, and you still have things to talk about. <laughs> That's great. Probably even more things to talk about, right? That might be. I don't know. Uh huh. Yes. Plus, you were a career woman. Not too much. I, <clears throat> when I got married, uh -huh. I kind of loved the church, and I loved being a uh, part of it. So uh -huh. I. That was an interesting situation. We'll get there in a little bit. Ooh, after. Let's get there right now. I, um, <laughs> after we got married, the first week we went on our way down to California because Don had a job there. His first ministry was in San Diego. And mm -hmm. what better place could you start out? Mm -hmm. And. On Sunday evening, he was getting ready to go to the youth, and I started getting ready too. And he said, where are you going? I said, well, I was going to youth. Well, you weren't invited, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> I went home and cried for an hour <laughs> and wrote thank yous. <laughs> and then uh, we had evening services. He said, I... He forgot to tell me the time, and so I didn't get there at the right time. But I don't remember <laughs> that at all. Uh -huh. I just remember the other. So I found to do the things in the church that I like to do, and we didn't work together. We uh -huh. just each did our own thing. Uh huh. And so it worked out uh -huh. that way. And what had you going into nursing? Well, I w lived on the farm. Uh -huh. And uh, from the time I was a little kid, I used to go out and get find the kittens. You know, mm -hmm. on a farm mm -hmm. you have baby kittens, and they would have sore eyes. So I would clean their eyes out with boric acid. They liquid. were your first patients. <laughs> and they were my <laughs> first patients. And uh, I had the privilege. So that kind of took me to the interest of taking care of diseases uh -huh. and things of that sort. Uh -huh. And I liked the baby kittens. I loved the little baby kittens. Uh -huh. And it was an interesting life to live on a farm in those days. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad was creative, so we had our own power system. Mm -hmm. And the REA hadn't come around yet, so we didn't have electricity for the whole area, but we had it. Mm -hmm. We had two telephones. Mm -hmm. One went to a man who lived on our property. He was b somewhat blind, and he would call every morning to let us know he was alive, mm -hmm. 
And if you wanted to talk, you rang twice. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, that was kind of an interesting uh -huh, thing. Uh-huh, right. Yeah. So <laughs> we grew up in a one-room schoolhouse I went, and that was interesting because it was so different. You didn't have running water in your uh, school. You didn't have uh, inside bathrooms. You had a outside toilet for the boys and an outside toilet for the girls. And so it was, uh, they were separated from the school. They weren't right there. And this was in what state? Oregon. Oregon. So it wouldn't get too cold. Well, no, it wasn't too cold. We had a, a big fat stove in the center of the room though and uh -huh. at lunchtime we used to toast our sandwiches when it was cold. <laughs> <laughs> that was interesting because the teacher had one of these that you roasted hot dogs uh -huh. and it would hold two or three hot dogs and so she just put a sandwich in there and would uh -huh. toast it. So one of the boys made the same thing, and we had the toaster, and we'd all call out first for the toaster. <laughs> <laughs> and but how many children were in your school, in your class? Usually, not more than about twelve. Sometimes we might have sixteen, but that was all grades, mm -hmm, first right. through the eighth. Mm -hmm. And uh, my dad was, as I said, sort of progressive, so he got buses and they were just people's cars to mm -hmm. take us. Anybody that lived uh, more than a mile away from the school would be picked up mm -hmm. and brought to school. So that was helpful. Mm -hmm. And I guess I can blame him because I didn't know he did that until later I read. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So it was interesting. Education was important to him. Yes, well, he went to college. Which was very unusual at that yes. time. Yes, he went to normal school and then he taught for two years before he married. He quit when the war was on because this was mm -hmm. back, he got married in 1921 mm -hmm. so the war had just been before that and mm -hmm. uh, it, interesting. So and he, how many little people were at your house? How there was siblings? only one sister. Uh -huh. And I always wanted a brother, <laughs> so I preferred boys to play with. <laughs> and was that sister older or younger? She was three years older. Uh -huh. And if I wanted to play, I had to play what <laughs> she wanted to, because she didn't want to play what I wanted to. <laughs> Is she still alive? No. Uh -huh. No, she died uh, about three years ago. Mm -hmm. Were yeah. you close? Pardon? Were you close? Not really, because we were very different. Mm -hmm. I turned out to be almost like the uh, older sister, because when we were together, she would read the paper. <laughs> <laughs> and I would be the one that was helping. Uh -huh. I said to my mother before she died, I said, well, it seems like I used to do more than my sister did. And she said, well, you did. <laughs> you were the responsible one. I don't know. I think she was responsible, too, but she was in a different world. Uh-huh. Kind of, uh -huh. I think. I don't know. You know, she would sit in a group and not always talk. Uh -huh. And I was more of a talker. Uh-huh. And Kay, that's how I see you, too. You're very non-judgmental very inclusive, and you bring out the best in people. It was nice to hear. <laughs> That's remember. a skill I think you have. I really well, do. thank you very much. And, and what about these nurses that you've gotten together here at Westminster? Well, that started out, I think, Ken Kenlin and I were talking, and we thought it would be nice to get together uh -huh. and so we just, uh, she wasn't the first one that helped me with the luncheon, it was, and I can't remember, I think it was Beverly Morgan 
And of course, she's not with us anymore, but uh, we've lost about, uh, I think there's seven that we've lost since we started. Mm -hmm. and, and how many have you added? Well, we have about 15 now. Uh huh. One of them is a, was a, a she wasn't an RN, so she was just a social, you know, I can't even think what you call them now. Isn't that terrible? Like a practical nurse? Yes. And, but she doesn't want to be affiliated with us anymore. Uh -huh. So I don't know if we didn't make her feel, you know, special or whether she just may not have time. Mm -hmm. Who knows mm -hmm. what the difference is. And the first meeting you had was in, go ahead. Well, you did incredible place cards because I saw Kenlin's was a nurse's hat with a name on it. Uh -huh. And uh, her little bear in front of the entrance has been wearing it at times. <laughs> 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 but that was a lot of work. Well, it was in a way, but not that much. Uh -huh. you know? uh, I ha still have my hat. Uh -huh. And I just downsized it, <laughs> the pattern. Uh -huh. And so uh, the last one I made little ones, and I was going to put the nuts and stuff in it, but uh -huh. it didn't work that way. <laughs> <laughs> You're very creative. Well, in some ways, not mm -hmm. always. Not always. <laughs> and yeah. that's Kay, who always gives a lot and then just... It's okay. <laughs> you and Don are two of the nicest people here and uh, just so humble and yet so giving. Well, thank you. Very, very appreciate the two of you. Well, thank you. And uh, I didn't expect to get that <laughs> in this interview. I was, uh, when we got to high school, it uh -huh. was still a small town, about 500, mm -hmm. and that's the size town. And then the war came along, so it got mm -hmm. smaller. And by the time we graduated, our class graduated, there were only 36 in the high school. Mm -hmm. So in our class, there were just seven. Mm -hmm. So naturally, I was valedictorian. <laughs> <laughs> Not naturally. <laughs> There were six others that didn't get to Well, be. the one that I felt that would have been, because he was uh, a year younger than we were, but because he was the only one and there were three of us in the fourth grade, mm -hmm. he was in the third. The teacher pushed him up to the fourth grade <laughs> uh -huh. and he graduated from West Point. And wow. the last year of high school, he went to the Dalles, which mm -hmm was a larger school and had more to offer mm -hmm. and got him ready. His mother thought for West Point. Mm -hmm. so. And did this school have class reunions? Yes, we did have some, not uh -huh. too many. But the last time we were get together was about, we'd been 60 years and so mm -hmm. there were still I think there were still four of us left. Mm -hmm. So there were quite a few left. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, and who organized the reunions? Well, it was, I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> I think Gerald had something to do with it. Because um, uh -huh. he was going to be out. No, the last reunion was a uh, farmer's union. and. No, it was Pioneers of the Dalles, and he decided to come because he lived in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. so he got us all together, and mm -hmm. that was uh, really nice. Mm -hmm. Since then, he's died, but uh, mm -hmm. he was in a wheelchair, so he still bought all the groceries. Mm -hmm. He has, <laughs> he was a dynamic person, mm -hmm. really, mm -hmm. just a really nice man. Now, how did you go about meeting Don? Well, went to college. Uh -huh. The principal at our school said, well, 
you are a Christian, and I don't think you can be a Christian and a nurse. Well, what is it all about? You know, who was he? <laughs> anyway, I went to Bible college before I went into nursing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't meet him then, because he was in the service. And so I joined the cadet corps, which is the mm -hmm. part of what the is. army or the navy or mm -hmm. whatever, part of the uh, forces. But I didn't have to serve because the war was over. And mm -hmm. But I did get all the benefits because our way was paid. And we got to go to the college for a year up in La Grand, Oregon. Mm -hmm. And that was a wonderful experience because I got to do a lot of things with uh, Youth for Christ. Mm -hmm. And the Salvation Army captain took us to Portland, which is quite a long ways from La Grand, it, mm -hmm. and to meet Billy Graham. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was a long time ago, but mm -hmm. that was uh, kind of an exciting time for mm -hmm. us. And we thought maybe he could help us <laughs> in <laughs> Youth for Christ in the Grand. <laughs> Who knows? Help you stay a Christian and a nurse. Huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that's, uh, and then I thought, after I graduated from nursing, I thought, oh, I don't know if I want to be a nurse the rest of my life, you know? And I thought, well, I think I'll just go back to NCC. So that's what I did. Mm -hmm. And when I graduated, the, pre the president didn't know what degree to give me because <laughs> it wouldn't be education. Uh -huh. And so he gave me uh, Bachelor of Theology, so I... <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. I uh -huh. never became ordained, though, uh -huh. but I did a lot of service within the church, uh -huh. and I don't think anybody knows <clears throat> that I have a Bachelor of Theology degree. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Which is interesting, mm -hmm. because it's probably been helpful to me in lots of ways. Mm -hmm. I uh, enjoyed being a minister's wife mm -hmm. and Even if how we got acquainted was interesting uh, I invited him to a house thing that we had we had uh, the house I was in it wasn't a sorority or anything it was just Stevens house is what we called it anyway we had a breakfast that we invited different ones to us on Valentine's Day. And I said, I don't know who to invite. There's nobody as old as I am. And my roommate said, oh yes, why don't you ask Don Jones? She said, I said, well, he's not that old. Because <laughs> he didn't act that old. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it was interesting because uh, then we started dating for a while and our romance was on and off all <laughs> for three years. <laughs> it was interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I was really broken up the first time he refused to come to something I invited him to, and I, it really broke me up. But I thought, well, if it's not God's will, you know, what, mm -hmm. what have I to do with it? So. Anyway, off and on, off and on, and uh, when I graduated a year before he did, and the funny thing was, we had his mother, I was the president of the women's organization in the school, and we would have a special occasion each year, and <laughs> we had her as the guest speaker. Well, at the time, we weren't dating, <laughs> so I had to be nice to <laughs> his mother. <laughs> and as the years passed, how did she describe that time? I don't know if she described it. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> she would think it was none of her business. <laughs> uh -huh. Maybe, I don't know uh -huh. what she thought. 
Yeah. Was she a nice mother-in-law? Yes, yeah, she was. Mm -hmm. She wrote me a real nice letter when we got engaged. Uh, this was funny because, do you think he asked me to marry him? <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he said, I think we should get engaged. <laughs> And then after a while, I said, well, do you want to stay engaged the rest of our <laughs> lives, or do you want to get married? <laughs> so it was interesting. Uh -huh. The school had him going after graduation to a little town up in Washington. And uh, it just happened that his aunt's uh, husband was uh, in interim, at a church in Vista La Mesa, California, which is right outside of San Diego. And they had worked to get a minister and he was on his way to go there and then he told them he wasn't going, he chose another place. Mm -hmm. So she, they asked his aunt if she knew anybody, because they were kind of needing somebody she said, well, I have a nephew that graduated from Bible college. I don't know a thing about the kid, <laughs> but here's his name. So they got in touch with him, and he got the job. And he said they were more interested in what he, that he would be getting married than what he believed. Because <laughs> they didn't want a single uh -huh. man for uh -huh. a minister. So, so we got to start out our married uh -huh. life in San Diego, and that's when it happened that he, I wasn't invited to the youth group. <laughs> <laughs> he had a few things to learn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I did direct a children's choir. Uh -huh. so uh -huh. anyway, we had. So music was part of your background, too? Well, I started singing when I was six. Uh -huh. duets with my sister. The minister's wife had me standing up on a step <laughs> <laughs> so our voices would be coming out of the same place, uh -huh. which was interesting. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah, and we did sing. And yes, I've sung a lot. Uh -huh. I've been in the choir. We're still in the choir. Uh-huh. And enjoy it. Yes, we, most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were the minister's wife, and then when when did you start nursing? Well, I nursed uh, when we we were in San Diego for about six years, and he got a scholarship to uh, go to Berkeley, and so we moved up to Northern California to a little town called Geyserville. And in Healdsburg, which is a adjoining town, they um, had a, a hospital and they needed a, a nurse 3 to 11. So they came and asked me if I would come and work there. So I, I thought, well, I'm not doing anything. And Don, his schooling didn't work out. He has dyslexia, mm -hmm. which you probably heard when, mm -hmm. his when I talk. interviewed him. Yeah. And it didn't work out because the dumb <laughs> faculty <laughs> member gave him an F on a paper that he had given him A's on everything but the spelling. Oh dear. Mm -hmm. And that was just, I was so angry at the <laughs> school because <laughs> they didn't check to w see mm -hmm. what he had done on, on the uh, preaching point that he was at. He was mm -hmm. preaching at Geyserville and the church had split. I mean, it hadn't split. People quit coming, mm -hmm. and he got them back. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that was important. Mm -hmm. And they didn't pay any attention to that. Mm -hmm. It was that he couldn't spell. Mm -hmm. And you can get somebody to write your things, mm -hmm. but we didn't know that. <laughs> right, right. Would have been a little different today. So anyway, I did everything there on the 3 to 11. I even had to give anesthetic, which I hated doing. Oh my goodness. But that was only for the women that were having babies. Mm -hmm. And the doctor was responsible. So 
but I didn't like it. I thought they should have trained a nurse to do that and then had her on call, mm -hmm. but I didn't tell them what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> so, on the one hand, you were brave. On the other hand, you were yeah. not so brave. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, I didn't know if it was my place to say that or not. So anyway, that was the only thing I didn't care for about it. There was a LPN that uh, took care of the nursery when she was there, but on her days off, then I had to do the nursery in the e emergency room. And if there was a, there weren't too many times that they had a, a baby there. Mm -hmm. But it was an interesting experience. Mm -hmm. Learning on the job. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and when it comes to babies, you had three children, I think, mm -hmm. and boys, girls? Uh, two girls and a boy. I wanted four boys. <laughs> How well, come? God <laughs> knew that I couldn't handle four boys, so he <laughs> sent me two girls to get me ready for the boy. <laughs> and the boy turned out to be a landscaper, and he did the fountain here. Oh, wow. The memorial fountain uh -huh. for Kathleen Randolph because yes. he worked for her, and uh, the one of the daughters of his daughters uh, used to work here in the dining room. How interesting! And she was very fond of Armand. Uh huh. She just thought he was as wonderful. many people are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she gave us a mixed race little granddaughter that is the cutest thing <laughs> and she will try anything <laughs> she's very progressive the little girl she's cute as can be mm -hmm. has the curliest hair and <laughs> i would <laughs> die taking care of it i think <laughs> and how old is she now she's three now three yeah is yeah. she taught she talks a lot yes uh -huh. yes uh -huh. she talks a lot and does she get to visit well, Here. she could. Well, yes. Uh, we don't get to see, you know, with the pandemic yes, and the right. things, it's been hard. But mm -hmm. she's been... <coughs> Her mother is very outgoing. Mm -hmm. And she... Uh, she's sort of a counselor in, in the school. Uh -huh. Her mother does. And she, uh, she thinks she's just like me. <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice thing to be. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's her. And the daughter lives just down the street here. Oh, how nice One of is my that? daughters. Uh -huh. The other daughter is in uh, Idaho, and she had two sons. They moved there when the oldest son was 10. They didn't like the heat. Mm -hmm. And so they moved to Idaho, mm -hmm. and her oldest son is a lawyer. He's in Portland now, and he does a lot of speaking with other lawyers. He, I don't know exactly, I haven't talked to him for a long time because he's busy, mm -hmm. and uh, he's lived with a Jewish girl for about 16 years now, and mm -hmm. she doesn't want to get married. Mm -hmm. When I told this to the rabbi here, he said, well, she's not a real Jew then. All they want to do is get married and have children. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think that's necessarily true either. Right. But, uh, right. uh, anyway, he's had a good life, and his brother has two children, and mm -hmm. they're very well. One is... A uh, four-point student. She's 13 now. Wow. And she plays sports. She does theater. Mm -hmm. She plays the piano. She sings. She sang for our 70th anniversary. How nice was that? Yeah. Very. And, you know, they've done such a good job. Each of them got their master's, and the other worked while they got their master's. He and his wife. Mm -hmm. And I think they did 
such a smart thing, you know. Then they had their children, mm -hmm. and they've been married for quite a while, since mm -hmm. 05, mm -hmm. 2005, mm -hmm. and so they've done very well. Mm -hmm. And both of them got their master's degree, and he has a good job. They worked for a croc company for a while, and you know, that's what, uh, from uh, McDonald's, oh. the, the Crocs have set up yes. places in lots of towns that don't have community centers. Right. And right. so they worked there for seven years. They worked at the Croc company for, and were in the religious part of it. Mm -hmm. so, what an interesting experience. Yeah, it was. <coughs> but now they have their own jobs. Mm -hmm. Did We've, they ever ask you for advice? No, <laughs> not really. <laughs> I don't think they need it. <laughs> um, I, we've been fortunate. Our first church that I was at, uh, there was a neighbor who found out that I liked sewing. Because mm -hmm. when I was five, I made a hat for my doll and <laughs> took it into my mother and she was amazed <laughs> and it was kind of like a tam you mm -hmm. know two sections to it so i've always liked sewing and i've done a lot of it mm -hmm. and this neighbor said i will take care of your little girls if you want to sign up for this sewing class it was a tailoring class and mm -hmm. so she did, and she paid for my class. How nice. And what a wonderful thing to do. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that was so nice is my girls were just 11 months apart. And the, one of the gals in the church said, I know what it's like to have children close together. I will get someone to come in and clean your house once for a month if you would like it. Well, what do you do? You accept, <laughs> don't you? That's right. <laughs> and so things like that have happened to us all mm -hmm. our lives. Yeah. But it doesn't surprise me that people were kind to you and Don, since you and Don are kind to others. Well, maybe we are. <laughs> I think you are. <laughs> so we've had a good life mm -hmm. in uh, L.A. I got pushed into being a PTA president, <laughs> and I thought, why did I? <laughs> I was on the committee to pick out a president, and the gal that was on the committee said something about it, and I suggested that they have uh, two, you know, mm -hmm. code president. Mm -hmm. And the next meeting I went to, Kay will be our <laughs> president and I thought what do I do do I accept it or do I not well it was one of the most wonderful things that ever happened to me it really? was, yes mm -hmm. it was a, a, a biracial group uh -huh. that we worked with and then when we went to the convention it was like a religious experience because you had all these different religions that were together. Mm -hmm. And it was really interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I felt, well, it was worth it, you mm -hmm. know. And so you never know mm -hmm. what you get pushed into. The mm -hmm. other thing was teaching in urology at the hospital in Eugene, because I stayed in Eugene. Don and I weren't dating when I graduated. And I thought, well, if I leave town, he's not going to look me up if he decides to come back. Mm -hmm. So I stayed there and I worked on the urology floor. floor and this n nurse, the head nurse said, would you like to help me teach urology? I thought, what a good experience. <laughs> After the first class, it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was an experience that I wouldn't have had uh -huh. otherwise. So, uh -huh. you know, 
you can be pushed into things mm -hmm. and do something. You know, you can accept it or and grow with it or not. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you were open to a lot of opportunities. Yes, and I made a lot of mistakes, too. Well, don't we all? <laughs> uh, when we were in training, I was at Dornbecker, uh -huh. and there was a child that had a open heart surgery, and it was kind of an experimental thing. And I was supposed to be his special. To, mm -hmm. And I didn't take his blood pressure every hour, but I didn't know you were supposed to. I took mm -hmm. it every four hours. Got balled out because I didn't take it every hour. Mm -hmm. So he was fine, and he was the next day they had a picture of him in the paper. <laughs> so that was one experience that was. You know, you learn things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the other was I gave the wrong medication to a, a tonsillectomy. Mm -hmm. And he was having trouble breathing. And I we called the doctor and the doctor said, are you sure this child had got coding? And I thought, I'm not sure, because we had to mix it. Mm -hmm. So the nurse and I went and counted the drugs, and sure enough, I'd given him morphine. And mm -hmm. so I was honest and told the truth, and the head nurse said, I don't know what punishment you could have that was different than you staying with him until he was okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She said, I think you've had punishment enough. Mm -hmm. So that's why I wasn't kicked out of nursing, but, you a know. Wise, a wise person. <clears throat> it was interesting, you know. Uh, the poor little kid, his mother had died at, went from the anesthetic at some time. I don't know when it was, but. Mm -hmm. So the father had this little boy, and he was mm -hmm. having trouble breathing, but he, the doctor gave him a, Coffee enema, I've never heard of that. <laughs> I don't know. And then he gave him other medication, mm -hmm. but we called him in and he knew what to do, so he mm -hmm. saved his life. Mm -hmm. But it's hard. So those are two things. Mm -hmm. that... mm -hmm. I don't believe in mistakes. You don't? Nope. I always believe that people are doing what makes sense for them to do at the time they're doing it. Otherwise, they'd be doing something else. And well, we need to be open to what's the new information and how do I go forward. Yeah. <clears throat> and I hear you interested in what was the new information and how do I go forward. Yeah. Instead, our society, you correct and you correct and you correct rather than um, what did I learn and how do I take it forward. Yeah. Well, I don't think I ever made the wrong you didn't Man, do it on purpose, <laughs> right? No, of right. course not. But right. I probably at that time, I was in training. Mm -hmm. It was during training. I wasn't a real sure of the difference between coding and morphine, and that sure taught me. Mm -hmm. Yes, you really learned something. Yeah, mm -hmm. by experience. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ugh. Well, what other things did you encounter as the minister's wife? Well, I never was asked for advice too often, I don't think. Probably they thought I would tell them exactly what <laughs> they didn't want to hear. <laughs> Who knows what I did. Um, I was active in lots of things. Uh, one time I started the prayer shawl ministry in our church. Don was a minister at the time because he had retired and we stayed in the church and that was probably a mistake, but they kept asking us to stay. Mm -hmm. So we tried to not complain too much. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we were visiting a church and the minister gave out $10 to everybody that was there and told them to do some service project. Mm -hmm. 
and I had just heard about the uh, prayer shawl ministry at our convention, and I thought, well, that would be a good thing. I could buy ten dollars worth of yarn and start the prayer shawl ministry. So we did, and we've given out over four hundred prayer shawls since then. Wow. And we don't have a large, mm -hmm. and we've gotten, the one who turned 100 here, Lola Caldwell, mm -hmm. she did a lot of prayer shawls. And then her daughter, I think, came to church because of that, because she started knitting prayer shawls before she ever attended. Hmm. And explain, what is a prayer shawl? Well, there are different styles. Uh, we, they're used, uh, we make them about 60 inches long and about this wide. Mm -hmm. And then when you have some illness, you can use them in bed or I found when I was in the hospital, they were wonderful because you could use them with the IVs Mm -hmm. Sheets get all messed up mm -hmm. with the IVs, mm -hmm. and the prayer shawl is soft mm -hmm. and f fits around, and you wear it, and uh, you pray over them before you give them to the people, and mm -hmm. it, it's uh, a way of giving God's comfort mm -hmm. in a physical way. Mm -hmm. How many prayer shawls do you think you've made? Probably a hundred. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I'm not doing any now. Mm -hmm. I have one about this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Will you finish it? I will try because uh, you can't get the yarn anymore mm -hmm. that we use. Mm -hmm. it, the yarn we use doesn't show mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> That's good yarn. <laughs> yeah. That's a real good yarn. Yeah. yeah. Very interesting. And um, Church Women United I was active in, and I was active in uh, one of the things, let's see, what was it called? It was, oh gosh, I can't remember, but I know what it was because <coughs> we were working, it was called Fish. That's it. <laughs> Why can't I remember that? Mm -hmm. Friends help involved in helping. And uh, we did it with St. Maria Goretti and a small group in that area. And this little girl couldn't move anyway, so we had to pa do patterns with her. And that was to move every part of her body. Hmm. And that was interesting. Mm -hmm. kind of because I did that for a while. And <coughs> the mother, when she died, she <coughs> gave out little cookies that were to remind us of the little girl. So mm -hmm. that was a real interesting thing to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I used to take people shopping mm -hmm. and, and that was an interfaith organization. One. I was on the wheat board, which was world hunger, and I don't even know that they have it anymore, wheat. Mm -hmm. It used to be an organization that did work with hunger, and they had a lot to do with the crop walk. Hmm. And Church Women United, I was president of that in Scottsdale for four years, and when they gave me a Valiant Woman Award, and that was embarrassing. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, Probably it was so well much did. she did. The <laughs> the gal overdid it. I mean, she gave me a great big wreath. She made a doll. I don't know what else she did, and it was it was a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. But I just felt overwhelmed. You know, mm -hmm. I thought I am not this great. <laughs> You're pretty humble. Pretty well, humble. I don't know. <laughs> Well, and starting out with kitties as your first patients, that intrigues me. Those kitties that were your first patients. 
Well, I was just a little girl. Uh huh. Then. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it was interesting. And making hats for them. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, I probably have a lot of things I didn't uh, cover. Well, take your time and look oh. it over. Oh, good. Uh, Lois McFarland, I got acquainted with her because she did a couple of articles about me. I got into cakes, that's the thing. I kind of interested. Um, when our daughter got married, she didn't have any money, we didn't have any money, but we had charged her rent when she lived with us one time, and so we had about $500 to do her wedding. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, I'll make her cake. And so I did. I'd always wanted to make a wedding cake. And then my son wanted me to make his wedding cake because he was getting married the next year. And I thought, I should take the course, Wilton decorating course at mm -hmm. Penny's. And so I did. And then one of the kids in the church wanted me to make his wedding cake. So I made that. And I met a, a fellow who did the you know what they are. I can't say. I'm old, you know, and <laughs> I can't remember lots of names. But he uh -huh. was a caterer. That's what uh -huh. I'm trying uh -huh. to think of. Mm -hmm. And he wanted me to make a cake for him that next weekend. Mm -hmm. We were going on vacation, and I thought, well, I, I'll do it because you don't know what will happen. I worked with him for 15 years. Oh my goodness. And it's, it was an exciting thing. So I've made over a hundred wedding cakes. Wow. Could you make one today? Not as well as I had done before, mm -hmm. but I made for our 70th, I did do that. And it was just a small cake because I don't have an oven. Mm -hmm. I have a uh, com yeah. Convection, yeah, microwave, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And did it turn out? Well, no, it, it died. <laughs> it died. <laughs> the, the convection oven died while I was doing it. Oh dear! And one of the cakes was hard as a rock. <laughs> so none of them were really that good. But uh, then I made some later, and they were okay. Uh huh. So, you had to check out that skill again. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and you have one recipe or a number of recipes? Well, the one <clears throat> I've forgotten, uh, one of them I made was uh, with uh, champagne. Uh -huh. And I'd forgotten how I even did that, cause, uh, but I, that was one that they liked. And the carrot cake was one that they really liked. Mm -hmm. In fact, one of the places, uh, it's out on uh, Gold Dust Road, where we used to have several of uh, the receptions were held there. Mm -hmm. And they said, the people that run it said that the, that was the best carrot cake in the valley. Wow, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, I kind of combined some <laughs> <laughs> things, and I think, uh, it is a good carrot cake. It's uh -huh. moist because it has a lot of uh, oil in it, and I think that helps it. Mm -hmm. And chocolate was one, too. I didn't do too well on the white cake. I had to use a mix for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you put walnuts in the carrot cake? There were both walnuts and pecans. Oh, yum. That's what I like best about carrot cakes are the nuts. <laughs> yeah, well, I I read one of the places here that was a good place to get uh, desserts, and I can't remember their name or what it was, but I read what was in their contents, and their contents had uh, both pecans and walnuts. Mm -hmm. So that's, I mimicked them. Mm -hmm. Very good. <clears throat> I started out with a friend of mine's <coughs> recipe, 
and then one gal said, well, it needs allspice. So I added allspice, and that, it, it does give different flavors. Mm -hmm. A little more flavor and moist, and that's part of it, I mm -hmm. think. And the, did Don get to eat the leftovers that didn't turn out? Well, he would, I had to cut the tops off of a oh. lot of them because they raise up uh -huh. this way instead of flat. Mm -hmm. And he he liked those. He enjoyed it. <laughs> My grandson especially liked that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'd all hope that the top would yeah. raise. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing that my grandson, one of them, uh, had a stroke when he was about 20. He wasn't quite 20. He had gotten a four-year scholarship to the school of mines. Mm -hmm. And something happened there during the first semester that he was in the emergency room and they said that he had a tumor in the cerebellum and they said you need to have it removed and so they said you can have it done during the christmas vacation or wait till summer because it doesn't seem to be anything that needs it right away well he chose to have it between the semester as a result when they got in there it was not a tumor it was the malformation of the blood vessels. Oh dear. And when he was born, he had a hard time coming through the birth canal, so they did a cesarean. And in the process, I think it calcified the blood vessel a little bit and made it look like a tumor. And so when he came to from that surgery, he couldn't talk very well. He couldn't mm -hmm. see too good, and he shook like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> so he, he tried going back. He got over the shaking to school, but it didn't work. His thinking was still good, still smart, but not like he was before. So my daughter has had that to take care of. Mm -hmm. And her husband died early. He died just 10 years ago, and he was 59 when mm -hmm. he died. Mm -hmm. And so she's had that, and she has him to, he goes, he did graduate from college, from uh, ASU, and he was really good with youth, but he didn't get along with the English teacher. <laughs> too well and so he didn't stay in the English department and so the schooling teaching would have been out and I think he even though he's slow at responding he would have been a good teacher but mm -hmm. he does ceramics and he's very good at that and he works at Whole Foods mm -hmm. so he's worked there for several years mm -hmm. so that's that story mm -hmm. on him, mm -hmm. and I wanted to share that. And does he live here? He lives here, uh -huh. yeah, they, he sense. lives with his mother. Mm -hmm. He did live by himself in uh, ASU in uh, housing down there, but uh, when his dad died, he had to move back home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, my little boy, mm -hmm. one morning, we had a knock at the door at six o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. It was the neighbor boy <coughs> with our little son. He was walking down Whittier Boulevard. <laughs> and this kid was on his way to work. So he recognized Scott walking down the street. So he stopped and picked him up and brought him back home. <laughs> and I thought, my goodness, you know, that's just wonderful that mm -hmm. he was there. Mm -hmm. So we, we put a lock on the door. <laughs> there was a lock, but it was one that you could turn. Mm -hmm. And one mm -hmm. of the girls had showed him how to, <laughs> to unlock it. He was a wonder. Oh, gosh, yeah, yeah, he was. 
That's why, in retrospect, you're glad you didn't end up with four sons. Probably, <laughs> probably the reason. Yeah. And uh, our daughter was hit by a car one time too. She was going over to the neighbors, and she looked. I saw her looking both ways because I was sewing, and then all of a sudden I heard this screech, and. I went out and she was lying. Mm. They said it threw her about 60 yards. Wow. And I thought, oh, I had two little girls, now I only have one. But she moved and we took her to the hospital. And that was interesting too because the neighbors called the doctor. They knew who to call. Mm. And, you know, I didn't. Mm -hmm. But and they called the ambulance and uh, I didn't know where Don was. Mm -hmm. But the neighbor lady called the former minister and he just happened to be at a meeting mm -hmm. at that church. Mm -hmm. It was on a Saturday and oh my, I s stayed with her all. She was awake all night, uh, kind of throwing up. Mm -hmm. When I got to the hospital, the doctor was already there, hmm. and he said, do you want to call in a neurologist? If it were my child, I would. So I said, sure. Mm -hmm. And she turned out to be, only thing was a broken leg. So, mm -hmm. And how old was she? Four. Oh my goodness, just a little tyke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Well, you had many, many experiences. I have had a lot of It's been a it. full, full life. Yes, and <laughs> <laughs> we've had a good life. Uh-huh. But that's who you are. You'll bring things into being okay, even when they're not okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I've so enjoyed talking with you, Kay. It's been as it's been even better than I anticipated, and oh. I was looking forward to it. Well, good. So, Thank you so, so much. Um, and now everybody gets to know Kay. <laughs> Thank you.